All right, we got this nice schematic here, and the the, the board uh, the board itself has a whole bunch of test points on it. So let's go ahead and, and just uh, go through those just for fun. Um, so this pulse generator can you can supply it with an external trigger, and then it'll create a pulse from that trigger. Well, if it doesn't have an external trigger, then it uses an internal oscillator. So this is going to be the, a square wave oscillator. And we'll take a look at that. Now that square wave then needs to get turned into a pulse. So how do you do that? Well, you detect an edge and you detect an edge with this circuit Oops, over here. Uh, this uh, detects the edge and then it goes into a section here that delays that edge. So um, you can delay the edge from the trigger point. So you can trigger, create an edge, and then you can delay from that edge in some delay. And that's what this does. And then it goes into this test point, which is not quite sure what that is. It just looks like a buffer. And then uh, at the final, then we're going to have uh, drive into the output. And then the output generates a plus and minus drive pulses that will go into the final amplifier. So it generates a positive and negative edge in order to drive that final amplifier that gives you a, a, a good strong edge. Um, so the interesting thing about this uh, circuit is um, um, it's all discrete except for these little squares here, and uh, uh, we'll take a look. We'll take a look at what those mean. All right, let's look at the first test pulse uh, test point, which is uh, just the oscillator. So we'll take a look at the output here, and if I change the uh, speed of the oscillator, you can see that we can make it slow. Uh, that this contacts are dirty on this thing. Um, we can make it fast, we can make it slow, but it's a 50% uh, close to close to a 50% duty uh, waveform. Okay, so let's go down and go to the next test point, which is the uh, part that generates the pulse. And that's TPO. This is O2. We'll go to O3, which is here. And uh, Let's see if we're generating pulses here. And indeed we are, there are the pulses. So uh, it's preserving that front edge and then kind of trailing off, but it's turning, it's turning those, uh, let's see, let's put up two probes. I think that'll be more instructive. Let me keep, uh, let me keep probe number uh, two on the, uh, on the initial generator. So we'll just keep that up here. And then you can see we're getting a pulse on this rising edge and a pulse on this rising edge. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so now we've generated a pulse. Um, let's go in and see how that pulse is generated. All right, um, so I have a test clip on uh, one of the ICs. I'm looking at pins four or five as inputs and pins two and two and three as outputs. And I believe this is a, an OR gate or a NOR gate, um, something like that. Uh, so let's take a look at what we get. Um, so the top two lines uh, are the inputs. And so this is the output. So basically they both have to be low in order to get a high on the output. So low, low gives you a high. Um, and then there's a delay, right? So things don't happen right away. There's a delay, delay before the, the uh, digital circuit uh, propagates. So when this edge falls, this rising edge, and then it waits for this one to come high, and then that one will fall. Um, and there's some jitter in it. And that's because of the circuit that's hooked up to the um, the D1 line here is driven from an RC time constant, so it can move back and forth. And then there's the digitization of the um, logic analyzer. Um, we're at five nanoseconds per division here, so we're looking at about a, a one nanosecond resolution of the um, of the uh, logic analyzer. Um, and, uh, yeah, so then the outputs, there's a complementary output. So this one goes high, this one goes low. 
and they're not quite symmetric. Uh, there's a, this one's a little bit shorter than this one, but basically um, it is what it is. So uh, that match is what I think this part is. It's a very strange part, and I haven't found the data sheet yet, but I believe it's a um, collection of OR gates and NOR gates, uh, two input and three input devices all on one chip. So I'm still looking for the data sheet. But anyway, it validates what I, what I think is going on here. So this is how the actual pulse is generated uh, in the machine. Uh, there's an edge that comes along. This edge is derived from this edge. Uh, let me get rid of these. Uh, this edge is, I know what I can do. I can hit touch lock, then I can touch it, yay. Um, so this edge comes along and it gets diverted through an RC time constant that generates this edge on a different chip. So these, the, this one gets delayed a bit and then, and then occurs. And then that runs into this gate, which then generates this pulse. So that's actually the original edge pulse that happens in the system. So this is, this is what gives you the four nanosecond edge, I believe, or the four nanosecond minimum time. Uh, I'm probably getting it all wrong. The four nanosecond edge is due to the output stage, the slew, the slew rate of the output stage. But the, the, the minimum width of the device, I'm looking at the front panel now, uh, the minimum width is 10 nanoseconds, and these are giving five nanosecond pulses, so certainly in the ballpark there. But anyway, that's how this, uh, the pulse is generated using this logic. All right, so what I'm looking at is right here, that pulse comes in on this line and goes into that uh, gate. It also gets diverted through an RC time constant to this gate. Um, here's the R and here's the C. And this delays it a bit and then it runs into the uh, second input of the gate. So the difference in timing between this path and this path gives us that pulse. And uh, they call this the pulse shaper circuit. All right, I finally did uh, find a, not a data sheet, but a data book. Um, there was no data sheet for the part, but I did find a fair old, really not really old, I think 1970, 78 data book from Fairchild. Now these are ECL parts, and the part that's in the board is a, a 95105. Okay, that's the part number, 95105. And it's this thing here. It's a two double input OR gates and one triple input OR gate, and it's an OR slash NOR. It outputs the positive and the negative of both um, both the outputs. So uh, yeah, so a double input OR NOR, double input OR NOR, and a triple input OR NOR. All right, so here is a circuit for an ECL OR NOR gate. That's what we have. A and B are the inputs, and Z and, and Z prime are the outputs. So A and B are OR gates. Either one can, either one of these transistors can pull down here and steal the current out of this leg. Um, and so this is the OR function. And then the output is grabbed in these two transistors, one being the, uh, the, the, the um, current leg that's positive pulse and the current leg that's a negative pulse. That's how, how the outputs are generated. Now these devices generally are to be a run off of ground to minus 5.2 volts. They're opposite, they, they, they're, for various reasons, you operate them with negative voltages and you operate the top of them with, uh, uh, with, with a ground. Now, in this particular circuit, they are operating in positive voltage mode. They are connecting ground to the bottom and they're connecting 5.2 volts to the, to the top. And so you can, them, you can use them that way, but they're not recommended to use that way. They're better to use the other way, but you can get away with doing it the other way. You can see the schematic shouldn't care too much whether it's top or bottom. It has to do with really, really high speed circuits and, and uh, noise and stuff. You get better noise amenity, I think, in this particular configuration than the other uh, positive voltage one, negative voltage one's a little bit better. Okay, let's take a look at what we got though, uh, because one thing that's very interesting is this little bottom note here. It says that uh, pin one and pin 16 are VCC and pin eight is VEE. 
Now VEE is this negative one and VCC is the positive one. So it's got uh, uh, two VCCs and one ground that connect pin 8 to ground and pins 1 and pin 16 have to be connected to the, to the plus 5.2 volts. So um, yeah, it's, it's just a really strange part, really, really old part. You're not going to find one of these anymore, um, but uh, yeah, that's what's in there. So now we've generated a pulse. We go into the next section, which is the delay, and that is the next test point uh, here. And let's see. Let's go ahead and trigger on channel two. That'll make it a little bit easier. Channel, yeah, keep it. All right. So now we have these. Um, We have this pulses happening. Let's trigger on the positive edge. Oops. Uh, there we go. Positive edge. That's where all the action's happening. Okay. We have that pulse. Now we're going to uh, turn on the delay. And as we delay, there we go. We can uh, wait a minute. Let's see. Repetition, delay. So we are adding pulse width. Am I looking on the wrong test point zero four? Am I looking at the right one? Test point zero four. I thought that pulse would move over. Uh, let's see, this is duration. Okay, well, this is the pulse. Pulse delay. Okay, well, that's doing something. And then let's do TP05. TP05 is 3, 4, TP. That is 6. Where's test point 5? Test point 5 is missing. Uh, oh, it's over here. Ah, there we go. Ah, so that intermediate stage uh, was used to generate another edge. And so if we did the uh, delay, there we go. Now our pulse is moving. Okay, so that last test po point was uh, intermediate. And now we're generating that, that pulse and we're moving it over. All right, now we go to the next test point, which is six, which is over here. Now this one, I have to back out a bit, and let's move our trigger over. Okay, this one, I believe, is the duration. Yeah, there we go. So I can change the width. I can change the width of the uh, of the pulse there. Okay, so the width is changing. That's good. And then we'll go to the next test point. Mm, test point. And we're getting a negative going edge. Interesting. Okay, just a negative version of it. Test point eight. And there's the positive version of it. Okay. And then the final output is on test point seven and eight. Oh, those are the ones I was looking at. So you can look at the pot outputting a, a positive edge and outputting it. This is the positive one, and this is the negative one. So we've looked at uh, we've looked at all of these. So let's recap our schematic. So I like to do this with uh, old circuits. This is a great way to learn. Uh, it's rare that you find anything that's designed with discrete transistors any longer. But if you want to learn transistor, this is a great way to do it. Uh, how did they use those discrete transistors to do different things, right? This is how they built the oscillator. Uh, this is how they created uh, the, the pulse thing here. They cheated a bit. They used a gate, as we saw. Um, and then uh, there's continued to using some gates in here as well. It's kind of mixed between using an OR gate and using discrete transistors. Um, but yeah, you can kind of step through this thing and and uh, watch watch the signal on your scope go through this this board is just uh, 
laid out very old school and back when it was expected that you work on these things. And so these, uh, these test points here are labeled very well and they're gold plated. Uh, they're very nice and they have a, a hole in them so you can hook your scope probe on them. So yeah, uh, really, really good design. Um, it's old school, but these are great, great things to be, uh, to be learning from.